Hi everyone, this is Joseph at Lightspeed. Dynamic reorder points is a special report that you can use to both measure sales velocity of certain items, but also to compare that to your current inventory levels for those items and to determine how many you need to order to meet your anticipator demand in the days to come. So there are a few different steps to preparing a dynamic reorder points report. First, we'll begin with a simple sales report. From that report, we're going to determine the quantity that's sold of items and measure their average daily sales. Third, we'll determine how many days worth of inventory do we want to have in hand, and we'll use that to set our desired inventory level. Finally, we determine the amount that we need to order to meet that desired inventory level. So step one, begin with a simple sales report. This is a good sales report to begin with, our recent sales report. This looks at daily sales totals this week, but we're gonna change the data that's showing up on this report to prepare it for dynamic reorders. First of all, we don't need the completed date of the sale, so I'm gonna click on the gear icon and remove it. Additionally, we don't need the sale line total, so I'm gonna click on its gear icon and remove it as well. Now, some of the data we do wanna have on the report is from the items. So we need something to distinguish the products. I'll use the system ID. We also want to see what's the current quantity on hand. Now we also want to see at the sale line level, what is the quantity that sold during this time frame. Finally, the time frame we're looking at is the past week. We'll need a bit of a larger sample size to come up with a good average sales measure. So I'm going to change this from the past one week to the past 60 complete days. And I'm choosing complete days so that we have full days to work with. Let's run. Oh, now we have more than 500 results on this report. So I'm going to push the row limit up to 5,000. So let's see if that gives us a complete data set. So far, so good. Our next step is to calculate for each item what is its average daily sales. This we can find using a table calculation. So I'm going to go to the custom fields and I'm going to add a new table calculation. The sales we're looking at are from the past 60 days. So to determine the average daily sale, I'm going to look for the quantity of sales. And I'll click on that. Using a forward slash, we'll divide. And then I'm going to divide this just by 60. This will give us our average daily sales. Let's also change the default formatting to, let's say, one decimal and save. So that's looking good. This top product, for example, sold 413 in the past 60 days. That means its average daily sales volume is about 6.9. A little bit further down, this item sold 67 items in the past 60 days, so its sales velocity is about 1.1 per day. Even further down, we see that this item only sold 8 in the past 60 days, so its sales velocity is about 0.1 per day, and so on. So far, so good. The third step is to decide how many days worth of inventory do we want to have on hand and we'll use this to set our desired inventory level. A good way to think about this is, how frequently do I want to be making purchases from different vendors? Is it every three weeks? Is it every month? Is it maybe every two months? So on. And so this is what we'll use to choose our desired level. So let's say I want to have three weeks worth of inventory on hand. We could add a calculation to determine this. I'll go back to the custom fields and I'll add a new table calculation. Now I can reference the table calculation I used to create the average daily sales. So I'll start typing average, and we see it showing up here. Then we're going to create 21 days worth of this. So to do this, I'm going to multiply using a star, and we'll just enter the number 21. This will be our desired inventory level. Again, let's set that to one decimal, and we'll save.
cool. So this item at the top that has an average daily sales velocity of 6.9, it projects that we'll want 144 for the next 21 days. Similarly, this item where the sales velocity is 1.1 per day, it's setting that we'll probably want 23 or 24 in the coming 21 days. This item further down, where the sales velocity is only 0.1, it's saying that we probably only need two or three for the next 21 days, and so on. Finally, our last step is to determine the amount to order. We do this by taking our desired inventory level and subtracting the quantity that we have on hand. Once again, we can do this with a simple calculation. So I'll go back to the custom fields. We'll create a new table calculation. We'll start with the desired inventory level. Then I'm going to subtract the quantity on hand. This is the amount that we'll need to order. And let's make this a zero digit number because we can only order whole inventory. Let's save. So that's great. Now, many of these numbers show up negative. Why is that? Well, for this one at the top, it predicts that we'll want about 144 items to meet our demand in the coming three weeks. But if we look at the quantity on hand, we see that we actually have more than a thousand ready. So we actually don't need to order any. This is why it's giving us a negative number. What happens if we sort the results, though, by the amount that we need to order? Now we see numbers that are positive. This means that the inventory for these items is below that which we expect in the days to come. And we see how many items we want to consider having on hand in order to meet our anticipated demand. Now there are a few additional steps to consider if you want to make sure that dynamic reorder points is giving you the best value. First of all, if you're running on multi-store, it's not a bad idea to either filter or pivot on the multi-store so that you can see the sales velocity at each store. Not all products will be selling at the same velocity at each store, and different stores will have different inventory levels. This can give you additional views into what inventory movements you want to have to make sure that your inventory is best able to meet your customer demand. Secondly, you may want to look at a sales time frame other than the previous 60 days. Some industries can make meaningful decisions for the days to come based on that which immediately took place. But some stores may make more meaningful decisions based on what happened this time last year. So changing the sample might give you more precise information about what projections you expect in the days to come. Finally, if you're running this for different vendors, perhaps you're able to make purchases from different vendors at different frequencies. We can in fact use calculations to assign different days of inventory levels for specific vendors. You can find resources in our analytics community to find different ways of assigning day frames to vendors. So that's Dynamic Reorder Points. Thank you so much for watching this video, and you can find more resources here in our Video Help Center and in our Analytics section on Community.